Hey guys, uh, welcome to another episode of Poetry in the PM with yours truly, Giacomo Gianielti. Uh, thanks so much for joining me on this poetry journey. It's been amazing. Um, I love connecting with you guys. Love uh, sharing all this beautiful poetry, this beautiful literature from all around the world that's connecting us in this very divided time. Uh, it's been a pleasure to kind of connect with friends that I wouldn't have otherwise seen or, or talked to. Um, and, and today is a great example with Janine Mason. Um, you know, she shoots on uh, Roswell and it's all, it's all shot in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, so I don't know when I would ever be able to see her uh, as she's in New Mexico. Um, so this is an amazing opportunity to connect, to see each other, to share some poetry from her culture. Um, she's Cuban on both sides, so she's going to be reading some Cuban poetry today, which I'm really excited for. Um, thank you guys uh, for all the amazing messages on the finale uh, last night. It was an amazing episode, and I'm glad that you guys all enjoyed it so much. You guys really enjoyed DeLuca's storyline. Uh, I read all your, your tweets and stuff, and you guys are amazing, so supportive, so thank you for that. Um, so, uh, also the poem that I read yesterday about healthcare workers, uh, was really well received. So I'm going to try and post that so you guys can all, um, share it and download it and send it to all your healthcare worker friends. And again, thank you to all our healthcare workers today. Uh, you guys rock. Uh, we love you. Uh, no matter what you're doing, if you're working in a hospital, we love you. Thank you for putting your life on the line for us. So, um, without further ado, I'm going to try and bring Janine on here and we can get to reading some of this poetry. So let's see if we can find Janine. Uh oh, here we go. Oops. What's going on? Here we go. Technical difficulties number one. Here we go. Uh oh. It's not working. Nope. It's not working. Oh, here we go. Here we go, that should work. Okay. Hey, we did it. We did it. Okay. okay, every day when I have guests, it's like major technical difficulties to get people on. It's oh, good. God. That was not bad. That was like not as bad as normal, so. You killed it. How okay. are you? How's I'm good. Cold? She's great. Yeah, we're great. How are you? I'm good. I'm so where have you where have you decided to lock down and where are you in the world? I'm in Miami. I'm with my family down here. I was in New York because uh -huh. I was I I was on hiatus. We finished shooting Roswell end of January, so I was in New York. And then um I was actually on a bachelorette weekend. Uh, with I know. John I was. <laughs> it was my girlfriend Olivia's bachelorette weekend and all the girls that her friends from Philly, who I hadn't met yet, were huge Grey fans. Grey's fans, and they, Chocolo was sweet enough to send us a message. <laughs> yeah, you guys like sneaked in the last Bachelorette of the year. I think you guys got it, lucky. It was that Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and that Monday it was like everything had been officially like shut down. So on Friday we got there, we were you know just like getting situated, and and it was like the severity of it hour by hour. It was like the lockdown starts on Monday. So I went from there straight to Miami. I, I didn't bother going back to New York because it's just obviously been really yeah. devastating. So you got your whole family there in in Miami. Yes, we're all here in an apartment. Awesome, awesome. Okay. <laughs> no, it's been good. It's been great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Uh, you're like uh, trapped with families. It's amazing. It's amazing. Um, yeah. Better than being alone in New York. That's for sure. I so. feel you. I feel you. Well, thank you so much for coming on today. I really appreciate it. Um, this has been really fun for me, new for me. So um, there's always kind of challenges that that come with all this. So thank you for being patient. Um, so tell us a little bit about what uh, what you brought, how you found it, how it came mm -hmm. to you, and and, uh, and then we'll get into reading it. Yeah, so I love that you suggested finding something from Cuba. That's where I'm from. I'm first generation Cuban American. My parents were born there and came when they were very young. And um, Jose Mati is the obvious choice because he is he's truly considered a patron of Cuba, particularly of the arts, but also of the spirit of revolution and brilliant man it was fun to read up on him a bit i mean everything like philosopher political theorist um i mean he fought in the war he died on the battlefield you know fighting for cuba's independence so um quite an epic life and one that uh, is obviously honored extensively in cuba but it's also honored here in miami where we have such a big cuban of course population. yeah 
So I remember growing up and before I learned about him in school, it was like streets named after him, you know, schools named after him here, mm -hmm. statues of him. And, um, and so, yeah, these two pieces that we picked today, I'm super pumped about. The first one is very well known, um, Cultivo Una Rosa Blanca, it's called. And it's a very sh sweet and short one, but um, probably his most famous piece. Almost every Cuban knows of it, at least. Um, and the other one was one, because I wanted to find something that's sort of in line with what you're doing, where it's uh, reflective of the time right now. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to find something about friendship. And so this second poem, it took me a while, actually, to find it. There's a lot of his stuff that's about you know, his revolutionary, um, the battlefield elements, the like- Political the heavy, stuff. Yeah, the heaviness yeah. And, yeah. and obviously stunning and amazing, but I wanted to find one of his more delicate stuff that sort of feels like associated with- It's, it's funny you say that because it's, it, me too, every, every day, like trying to pick a poem, like, I mean, so many poets were kind of tortured people um, and a lot of it's very sad. And so it's kind mm -hmm. of hard during these times, like, okay, that poem is very beautiful, but it's also very sad and depressing. And I'm trying to, you know, uplift people a little bit as well. So it's just like, I've, I've, it's just harder to find poems that are that are happy and uplifting or, or give some kind of good lesson because um, yeah. it's harder. Yeah. Hell yeah. Look at that. There's, there's uh, a book for you to compile now. I know. <laughs> happy poems. Happy poems. <laughs> or times of yeah. quarantine. <laughs> exactly. So... so I'm yeah. really, I really love this one that, that I found. I know you love it too, but it was, I couldn't find the translation online. I found one that someone had uploaded um, on a blog and it definitely helped me, but I sat down with my mom yesterday and we translated it together. Ooh, so thank okay. you for that. It was very Mama fun. Mama Mason. Mama Mason. She helped out it. big. It was great. I love it. Yeah, that's the thing that I've been talking about a lot with uh, people um, who bring poems from different languages is like, does the translation really do it justice? Or is there ways that, you know, you can bridge it better? Because I certainly, uh, I read an Italian poem and I've done translations of other things. And it's, it's, it's always hard in languages that are so much more rich and have so much more words to truly get what that word means. Sometimes mm -hmm. you got to combine two words to get the meaning of that one in yeah. that other language in English. Um, so I hope that these translations do justice to what you know you understand in, in Spanish as, as much as possible. Totally. I will disclaimer where I feel like we failed miserably <laughs> okay. in RT, okay. but okay. tried our best. Yeah. All right. So you want to read, uh, which one do you want to read first? I'll read uh, Rosa Blanca first. Okay. Sounds good. So this is Cultivo una Rosa Blanca by Jose Martí. Cultivo una Rosa Blanca en julio como en enero para el amigo sincero que me da su mano franca y para el cruel que me arranca el corazón con que vivo, cardo ni oruga cultivo, cultivo la rosa blanca. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. There couldn't be a poem without the word corazón. It's just so right. like, it has to be there. I'm sort of pissed I didn't give it that. <laughs> the head bob. Um, Beautiful. Okay, now I'm going to read it in English. And uh, yeah. I cultivate a white rose in July, as in January, for the sincere friend who gives me his hand frankly. And for the cruel person who tears out the heart with which I live. I cultivate neither nettles nor thorns. I cultivate a white rose. So, what is this poem about, do we think? Well, for me right now, it felt like I couldn't help but, but be inspired by the parallel, where it's like we're seeing a lot of people who are putting themselves out there, who are putting their time and, and their health on the line. Um, and it's easy to love and inspire them, at least for me, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's also people that I think are maybe not being as helpful. And I'm seeing like a lot of hate <laughs> being thrown at those people. And of course, it's incredibly frustrating. But what I think Jose Mati is 
um, I think he was maybe a little more evolved or at least connected to that in this poem where, where he can still keep love in his heart for everyone at every time. So it's, it's something I'm, I'm trying to practice a little more as a result. Definitely. definitely. Just showing compassion and those, those uh, we, we have to love those who maybe don't show love our way um, just mm -hmm. as much uh, because if they're, if they're that way, they probably need more love than anyone. Amen. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, yeah, that's a, uh, yeah, so you, you should cultivate a white rose, which I guess is like a symbol of love for mm -hmm. for for your your friends as much as your foes, I guess is what they're what he's kinda mm -hmm. trying to say here, which is which is pretty uh noble and pretty humble and hard to do. It's not a yeah. it's not an easy task that he's uh, asking us to rise to. Um Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I thought um I, even this, like this poem, before I even realized this white rose metaphor, that it was Jose Marti's poem, before I put it together, I realized I knew it. And then what my mom, funny enough, yesterday, she said that um, Jose Marti was like always in the air in Cuba. And she said, even when she first came to the States, they they were sent to Connecticut for as asylum seekers, as all, you know, Cuban mm -hmm. Americans were at the time. Mm -hmm. And so um, she says that even when she was young and in Connecticut, it was like Jose Mati was so a part of her life. She was like, I remember this poem before I even realized it was him. She's like, yesterday me reading it, she's like, oh my God, I know that poem. It was like, almost like a prayer where you know, you're mm -hmm. like years later, you still remember it. That's me in my like Catholic school. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, I went to Catholic school too. I, 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 you know? I, I feel you, I feel you. But even, even in Rome, in Rome and Italy, like there's sayings uh, on statues and on walls and things. You kind of grow up seeing these these uh, famous quotes and mm -hmm. you know them, but then you're like, uh, to be honest, like you put a gun to my head, I wouldn't even know who said that, but I know Absolutely. that saying word for word. Um, yeah. So yeah, for sure. Sometimes so the, the words can be more powerful than, than the people that wrote them. Yeah, and it just made me really proud for a moment that this was the messaging that was like in you know in in the like cellularly and cellularly in Cuba. Yeah. yeah. So. Very very cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. And what about your next one? Let's talk right. a little bit about this one. This one is called "Tiene el leopardo un abrigo." Um, so let me just read it and then we'll chat. Okay. Tiene el leopardo un abrigo. En su monte seco y pardo, yo tengo más que el leopardo, porque tengo un buen amigo. Duerme como en un juguete, la mushma en su cojinete, de arce de ja del Japón. Yo digo, no hay cojín como un amigo. Tiene el conde su abolengo, tiene la aurora el mendigo, tiene ala el ave. Yo tengo allá en México, un amigo. Tiene el señor presidente un jardín con una fuente e, y un tesoro en oro y trigo. Tengo más, tengo un amigo. Okay, now I'm going to read it in English. Get it. The leopard has a warm coat on his mountain dry and brown, but I have more than the leopard, because I have a friend. Sleeping peacefully, like a toy, the geisha on a silken cushion. But I proclaim with great conviction, there's no cushion like a friend. The count has his family blood. The beggar has the promise of dawn. The bird has its wings. But I have a friend over there in Mexico. The noble president has his lush gardens with a fountain and his treasure of gold and wheat. Still, I have more. I have a friend. Isn't that just lovely? Yes. And, in, you know, in these times, um, he's trying to draw attention to the power of love, power of friendship, you know, mm -hmm. wherever you find that friendship, whether it's your mother, your sister, your lover, you know, everyone can be your friend. And so um, I think in these times, a lot of people have been laid off. A lot of people um, have had their lives completely uprooted due to this. And it sort of forces you to look at, well, what do I have? Uh, what do I have to be grateful for? And um, that's certainly in, in these times, um, 
definitely the most valuable thing you can have is just someone, someone to love and someone who loves you back. Um, mm -hmm. so that you're not alone. So I think uh, it's definitely a beautiful poem that, um, that everybody can get some perspective from for sure. Good. I'm so glad to hear that. I really just, I agree with you. I think like it's you, you do get connected to like, what are the few things you absolutely need, you know, or that really take care mm -hmm. of you. And it can be so simple. Like, you know, I love knitting. It's like all I would do on the set of grades. It's just like, <laughs> Oh my God, you guys have no idea how much Janine knits. She's a knitting machine. I love it. And uh, I truly, the joy of like getting my pack, my first package of yarn this quarantine season, I was like, I'm going to make things. It's going to be great. We're going to be fine. You know, and that's a simple thing. That's, that's yarn and two pieces of wood, you know? Um, so I really loved this. And I also liked that it was for all his seriousness that like we were talking about with a lot of these, you know, mm -hmm. very serious poets. It's so cheeky, you know, and it's like the way he's like, mm -hmm. uh, the comparisons he's making. And I loved the like, you know, but I have over there in Mexico. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, you then you go like, okay, well, what happened to Jose Martin in, in Mexico? That sounds like a fun trip, you know? And Definitely. I loved it. I loved yeah, it. Yeah, and like, I've always wanted to fly. It's been like my only dream since I, could, I, I can ever remember. So I'm obsessed with like Peter Pan and like Hook is like mm. my favorite film. That whole story is like just everything uh, to me. And so, even when he says like the bird has its wings, I was and it's like, but I have more. I have a friend. It's 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 amazing because it's like as much as any superpower or any like mm -hmm. amazing thing that you could do, if you don't have anyone to share it with, it's sort of empty. And um, so I really yeah. like I really like that line too. Totally, sort of makes you feel like you're already flying. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally. Well, how have you been? How have you been coping with this whole uh, quarantine situation? How have you been staying sane, apart from knitting, of course? Apart from knitting at the storm? Um, actually, I think you would appreciate this. I finally, I was talking to Jake earlier, and now he's, I think, going to join the bandwagon, Mr. Jake Borelli, but I downloaded Masterclass, finally. Mm. I've been thinking about doing it for so long, and then there's I was so like, many. I mean, there's, like, got to be something. So many. So I started one... Uh, Neil Gaiman's class because I love his his prose is just so imaginative and I am not very familiar with him so I read a book of his and then I was so it's like a, it's on writing it's on writing and it's okay. just been fascinating and then the other one I'm listening to is uh, a, a wine tasting sommelier guy <laughs> you're like I can do that I can take a class about <laughs> drinking wine and Truly? pretend like it's educational and then I'm, I'm like, not just drinking. Me. <laughs> making, making some time for myself to, to right. like map right. out Italy. I'm just like writing down all the regions that he mentions. And I'm like, okay, one day we will yeah. do this tour. Mm -hmm. You're like, I'm not drinking. I'm, I'm taking a class. I am, yeah. I'm, I'm educating myself, guys. Get off my back. Brilliant. Um, Fine. Okay. Um, so that's amazing. been fun. How yeah, was how, how has the show been for you? Uh, did you guys get to finish your, your season or were you shut down like we were? No, we, we got really lucky. We finished end of January. So we were done. Um, and, you know, we're this is our hiatus time, but we're supposed to go back in, in, in July, just like you guys. So, um, you know, hopefully, we'll hopefully in the air. of course. So, um, you know, we're, we're, doing I mean just like you guys are doing it's like this weird silver lining where it's like because the show is actively airing it's been a fun way to be like extra involved with each other sure sure and like and and fun to get the feedback of what it means to the fans that it's airing now and and just like trying to be creative about engaging with people but um yeah my like I I truly have had nights where I just can't sleep because I just think about um a lot of the freelancers in our industry and people who could potentially fall in the cracks and people who work like Nicole and hair and makeup and, um, you know, all of our craftsmen and technicians and everything. So I was just thinking today, it seems like people are putting together lists of places you can donate to support the unions. Yeah. And it's like, you know, for certain productions, you know, originally the, the argument was like, are, are the productions going to cover all of their pay for what would have been? The, mm -hmm. the end of the season but yet the reality is like in normal times the season would have ended and then they would have been hopping on to something else exactly and now that that's not that's not true 
either. So it's about how, how can those people be supported even beyond what they were supposed to work for us for, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, Cause we would have been ending um, uh, end of, yeah, end of April. So yeah, yeah. I think um, it's going to ever. So everybody was covered for that. But then beyond that, you know, people would be hopping on other shows and now everyone's shut down. So it's like, how are those people going to, you know, mm -hmm. be able to, uh, to get some help? So yes, it's, 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 it's tough. So I think mm -hmm. a new thing for the government and, and luckily in America, cause I'm Canadian, the, the States, you know, have some power so right. state by state. You can kind of, um, put in some, some laws and regulations and stuff like that. It's been, it's been interesting to see how each state has, reacted to everything differently and at different speeds totally um and uh so uh yeah i hope you're staying safe there in, in florida yeah it's it, that that's what's been it's like you're we're such gypsies us peeps us, us actor folks so like my heart is obviously with la but also with new york and like here in miami and i feel my i'm like catching up so on torn. <laughs> yeah you know what i mean for sure. but um for sure but yeah, no, I feel very lucky to be with fam here. And, and, and it's been relatively chill here, which has been nice. Um, and I'm so happy to hear that like LA's looking like it's doing pretty well. And it's, you know, um, the projections seem to be chilling out versus what was it's originally. like so green and the sky is so clear. It's amazing just to see oh, what okay. a little bit of reduction in, in pollution and stuff has done. It's just crazy. I hadn't even thought about that. That's amazing. Like there's still cars out. You still pe see people yeah. moving around, but it's definitely like dramatically reduced. Totally. Um, so the the world is getting a little much needed break from yeah, yeah, yeah. our polluting, <laughs> our constant polluting and, and damaging of it. Um, God bless Mother Nature. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. Well, let's go to these uh, comments for a little bit. Do you guys have any yeah. questions for Janine, the amazing Janine Mason? Mm. I just want to ask her some questions. So sweet. Oh man! Maybe some people from Cuba who are listening and maybe right? want to say something in Spanish or. What do we got here? Wow, I'm amazed by how many languages are here. That's so wonderful. Hello from Israel. Shalom. Bonjour. Venezuela. Um... Do you miss Grace? Oh my God! Absolutely, I love. <laughs> I love all of them. I don't, you know. It was it was a good fam. Your your a, whole intern class and you guys were so close too. And I think you amazing. You knew Jake before that, right? It's not like you guys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we knew each other. We, we we had been friends already for like 6 or 7 years. Oh, um, wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. And that's so funny. And oh, I just had the best time. It felt like it, it just like was everything I could have hoped out of it. Cause I mean, as you know, I was a fan of this show way before getting to be a part of it. So um, it was really like, just wonderful. Just so wonderful. Mm -hmm. and I think it was a fun fact. I was actually in the room and we were shooting when you found out that you had gotten That's the, right. the uh, Roswell show, Roswell, New Mexico. And we were like full on scrubs. I think we were in like some surgery scene. And you were like, oh my God. I was I like, got on this, the I got this job. I got this job. Like, I'm going to be like, oh my God. And then, like, you know, from there, it was like, how are we going to, uh, you know, write Janine out? How are we going to get her to go? And so we made, you know, made this storyline that uh, you, were, you were a dreamer, which was like an amazing storyline, by the way. I love that. Um, and, um, you and Kelly I remember being like and I you know when you know it's the call because it's like it's your agency and you're like oh shit all right hello and then I'm like looking at you guys and you guys are like are you okay I'm like <laughs> yeah but because we're such pessimists when you receive that call it's like you're like oh I'm just like they, I didn't get it like you're, you're I didn't like, get oh, it this is gonna just be like a really crappy phone call like great just let's get over with yeah I know. totally totally that was the best um Hello, Argentina. <laughs> Come va bene, grazie. Got some Italians here. Oh, I love it. How's how's everyone doing? You you still have family in Italy, right? I do. Like my whole my father and my whole father's side is all oh, in Italy. Right, your dad. And, uh, they're safe, luckily, but uh, it's tough. You know, it's like policemen on the streets patrolling with megaphones, being like, "Stay inside your house." and you know, you have to have like a permit to leave the house and like uh, the grocery stores are all like lines and you can only go in a couple of people at a time. And it's just, uh, it's, it's, 
you know, those essential services are open, but it's, it's much more regulated. Like here, I can, I can just walk out and I can just go wherever I want. Like you can't do that in Italy. There's totally. cops that'll escort you back to your, your, your house. If you don't have like a valid reason to be out. Um, so, um, yeah, it's did, tough. Did you see that photo of these two men on their balconies and they put a table? I did. It was beautiful. I was just like, if that's yeah. not Italy for you. you know? Yeah, yeah, I know. How can we share a, a meal together? I know. Yeah. Well, food is just such a big part of our, our culture. It's like, yeah. I and cooking, went... cooking is like, you know, like we were talking about the poem before of like how, like, what is amazing about anything if you don't have someone to share it with? And I think, you know what I mean? A friend to share it with. And so for that, it's like, yeah, it's like, oh, I'm gonna cook this big meal and then just eat it by myself. Like, no, I want to like, share it with my friend or or totally. you know what i mean so yeah i i've been really loving seeing all those videos not just from italy but in spain and france and yeah. all over the world of people you know singing and you yeah. know putting a piano on their balcony and just rocking out to everybody on their street and everyone really cool creativity stuff. right now is what's amazing me like the yeah. way like we keep figuring out ways to make art even when we're not with each other to like keep conversations going and stuff it, it, it's like this is when I go like, oh, I love humanity. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I think like I saw the other day, somebody was saying like, you know, for all you people who don't think that the arts are worth investing in, like, please tell me how you would be doing right now without music and television and film and art mm -hmm. right now. With that was like non-existent, like what would you be doing right now? It's like, so when this Absolutely. is all over, it's like, remember how much art and artists um, mm -hmm. helped you through this time, you know what I mean? And so, A thousand percent. Uh, I People hope we come out of this with like a little more, I mean, like, like Debbie, Miss Debbie Allen, like everybody needs to just be supporting anything that woman puts out into the world because she is like Absolutely. such a turn of the arts, you know? Um, yeah. I hope she's we still dancing. Come. She's still dancing, doing dance videos. Nothing can stop her. She's, <laughs> uh, I'm convinced she's a robot. I've tried a couple times, but I'm just like, I don't know Debbie Allen to do the like dance class during lunch on the set of Roswell because Debbie does a dance class yeah, 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 lunch yeah. on the set of Roswell, on the set of Grey's Anatomy for those who yeah. don't know. Yeah. And I thought like, that's just the most brilliant thing I've ever seen on a awesome. set. And it's so, not like two people show up, like everybody does it. It's like, every, every, yeah, it's like awesome. Cause they're the like, time, why would I not go to a Debbie Allen dance class? Who the, the hell else has that opportunity? Day. Like. You know what I mean? Oh, God, yeah. The first time I went with Jake, he was so scared. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, amazing. yeah. <laughs> Horrible. But whatever. It's fun. It's so fun. God bless that woman. She's incredible. Love Debbie Allen on fame. Yes, we did too. Uh, hell, yeah. Okay. So, did you take class? I don't know what that means. I don't know. Hi from Houston. Houston. Let's see if there's any more up here. What was my favorite thing about working with Giacomo? Oh, that's very sweet. Oh, gosh. Be nice. I, just, I, I will. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I truly, like, I, I, I loved working with you. And it was, I felt so lucky because you kind of come in. I mean, as you know, you come in with that intro class going like, who am I going to be paired off with? Mm -hmm. And it ended up being you, me, Amelia, um, Katerina and mm -hmm. Justin and I just like I loved I loved our little group I loved spending time with you guys I loved listening to the the conversations that we would come up the like tangents we would go on between you Katerina and I with like the religion stuff and the I mean it was just it was wonderful and and I and working with you was wonderful like we just you too we, we miss you for sure oh. I miss you guys every day. Are you kidding? It was, it's just a special group over there, which I know you all know, but it was wonderful. And I, I do, I miss acting with you, my friend. It feels like it just was so fast too. Like so in fast. the moment, it felt like you had been there for a long time, but then like looking back, mm -hmm. wow, that was just like a blip. It felt like it was just like over. But, yeah. uh, but even like how many, like what season are you now on, on, on Roswell? So we'll start season three once this is like even that's crazy so, like you've already done two seasons of that show like that blows right? my mind you know what i mean like, absolutely wow. absolutely um, and congrats yeah. on all your success by the way super Thanks. proud of you very deserving Thank you. Very amazing, amazing. Very I mean, awesome yeah. going into your third season that's pff, amazing crazy congrats. right congrats do you I feel know. like you have like a relationship now with uh albuquerque oh god i love it like even so a couple nights ago we we did a pizza night 
And I found green chili at the grocery store when I did my run. And I was so excited. Like I eat things like that, I, they, it comforted me. I'm like, that's when you know it's pseudo home, when the foods bring you a little comfort mm -hmm. in, a, in a stressful time. So I do, I, I adore New Mexico and, and I've, I've been trying to share some small businesses there to get people to do what cool. they can to support them. Cause there's cool. so many, like, especially yeah. in Santa Fe, there's a lot of mom and pop restaurants and stuff that we all love, so. Yeah, you know? and where you shoot, is it very like, um, like developed or is it more kind of like uh, vast and, you know, out of, out of city? We, so our actual sound stages are, are just outside of Santa Fe. So it's pretty, okay. we're very close to the plaza and to town and to everything, but we can't, we do, we shoot on a lot of remote locations that Bonanza Creek is a space between um, Santa Fe and Albuquerque where they shoot all the Westerns. Um, so what was that? Ne um, the Netflix one that came out relatively recently um oh man that was it was a western bunch of women in it oh gosh i can't remember the name now but anyway they shoot a lot of westerns there and it's like it's just like rugged terrain you feel like you're in a john wayne movie it's pretty yeah cool. no it looks really really cool yeah. all those big red rocks and stuff it's amazing oh hell yeah oh hell yeah That's so amazing. okay well thank you so much for coming on uh this was a lot of fun thank you for sharing um words from your culture it's so beautiful and um you're amazing. Thank you. Stay safe. Uh, give my best to your to your family and um, hope to see you soon. I hope so, too. Give everybody Thanks. a hug for me. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Having me, friends. Okay. Bye, guys. We love you. Stay safe. <laughs>